Hey, it's Patricia Murphy. It's Monday, and this is Seattle Now. The smoke has cleared, and now it seems the number of new COVID infections in King County is dropping. That is fantastic news, but keep your masks handy. Trends are going in the right direction, but nationally, we hit 200,000 deaths over the weekend. In a minute, we'll get a reality check from epidemiologist Judith Malmgram. But first, let's get you caught up. A King County Sheriff's deputy is on leave after fatally shooting a man in Auburn on Saturday. The deputy was responding after someone reported seeing a man firing a gun in a nearby backyard. There was an altercation between the 32-year-old victim and the deputy before he was shot. The Sheriff's Department hasn't named the deputy or the victim. The Seahawks won their home opener last night against the Patriots in a nail-biter of a game. The Hawks held on to their lead and won 35-30. to Quarterback Russell Wilson threw five touchdown passes. He's thrown nine total in the first two games. And our air quality. It's officially good. The National Weather Service says a weather system with rain and a bit of onshore wind has blown that smoke out of here. The air has dramatically improved across the state as well, with only a few areas in the northeastern part of the state getting moderate readings. Take a deep breath and appreciate that clean air. While we were thinking about smoke and wildfires, the other threat in our lives, COVID, continued. There was news that the surge we had in August has passed and numbers are low enough that some school districts are considering a return to in-person learning. But really, what is low enough and where are we in this thing that has hijacked everything? Judith Malmgram is here to give us a perspective on where we stand. She's an epidemiologist and breast cancer researcher at the University of Washington. Judith, good to talk to you. Well, it's lovely to be talking to you today. So you look at COVID numbers every day. Is it true that we're in a better place now than we were a month ago? And how much better? Well, I would not be popping a cork on a bottle of champagne. Okay. Over the 55 per 100,000 that we have today in King County, what we wanted was 25 per 100,000. And when you say 25 per 100,000, that's 25 new cases for every 100,000 people, right? And it, yes. So once it got to 25 per 100,000, we went to phase two. Remember, it was a big deal on yep. all the numbers, all we talked about. And contact tracing and testing were going to keep it at that level. And that did not work. The numbers went up. We had 200. I mean, the the numbers were just astronomical. So we're coming down, coming down. The numbers, the way that the trajectory is going, things are really working well. And we could conceivably, I would really like us to get to 25 for 100,000, I'd like to get us below 25 per 100,000. We can't really lose sight of that goal and go, oh, okay, well, let's just open up again. Because what happened with phase two, clearly, when we opened up, all the numbers went up again. Right, right. And, you know, when we get messaging that says things are going well, you're doing so well, we start to tell ourselves stories about the risks that we're taking. Mm, Yeah, that's true. That's very true. And, and, I mean, we, we need to learn from, from the recent past. I'm not talking going way back. I'm just talking going back a couple months. Mm-hmm. Let's learn from that experience. When we went to phase two, what went wrong? Well, we didn't have contact tracing and we didn't have testing. And I would say we still are having problems. We are having outbreaks. There were 13 in one week in Snohomish County. And they were at a bar. Three were at child care centers. Two were on construction sites. Four of the outbreaks were long-term care facilities, which are supposed to have protocols in place. Two were in restaurants, and one was at a shelter. Yeah, yeah. What makes you nervous? Are you nervous about how people are reacting? People always make me nervous. (laughs) People's behavior makes me nervous. But the thing I think that concerns me the most right now is this all of a sudden jumping that we're going to open schools. There's no indication at 55 per 100,000 that there's any decline in children's rate of coronavirus infection. 
Yep. Mercer Island and Shoreline schools have both been talking about a hybrid learning model, maybe in the next few weeks even. Does this seem like a good idea? No, it doesn't. I'm sorry. It's complicated. I mean, look at how a hospital operates. Like I go to the hospital for a meeting, and I'm checked at the door. You get a temperature check, you get a list of symptom check, and then you get a sticker that says, I've been checked today. Right. Hand sanitizer, mandatory, and you put your mask on if you didn't already have one, they give you one. So is every school going to be set up that way? It's possible, but... They have to have everything set up. And more importantly, they have to figure out what their liability is. If a kid gets sick, how are they going to quarantine that kid? How many kids are they going to quarantine? Do they have a telephone tree to contact everybody immediately? They can't wait for the state that takes 24 to 48 hours for contact tracing. All those kids need to be notified right now. What do you do with the child that they're at school and they get sick? All the contingencies that can happen with a coronavirus infection and the fallout from a single case in a group setting has to be put together. It's very complicated. It is very complicated, and I have a 14-year-old. I am not sure I would feel comfortable sending him back to school right now. And to be honest, I'm not sure he would want to go back to school right now. It's a risk. Um, I think some families are not going to have the option of being home with their children. There are people who have to go to work, and their kids are home alone, left to try and figure out how to do their home online learning. If it was back in the day with me, I I was a single parent. No, it's incredibly difficult. You're right. There are a million scenarios in this city. Yeah. And also, honestly, as a parent... You also know how quickly a kid can go from not sick to really sick. Yeah. You know, yep. you, you think they're fine, and then all of a sudden you look over and you're going, what's wrong with you? I don't feel good. And you take their temperature, and it's 102. And, I mean, as much as humans like to be close to each other, kids love to all smurf together. Don't they? Oh, gosh. I mean, have you ever seen a group of kids in a room that are watching TV or something? Do you see them <laughs> sitting six feet apart? No, they're as close together as possible. They like to smush in there together. Yes, absolutely. Not to mention, Judith, the the social and emotional implications of being the kid who's sick or suspected of being sick because, you know, the hot rumors, right? The hot rumors. Yeah. So you're going to be ostracized maybe for the rest of your life because you've got everybody sick at your school. All right. What do you want to see in the next few weeks? What would make you feel like we're on the right track? I would like to see the numbers continue to go down. I would like it if we would wait on popping the cork on that champagne till we got to 25 again. I mean, if we can go from 100 or from 200 to 55, we can get down to 25 again. And that would mean a lot of people are taking care and being respectful. We've had some time. It's not like we didn't know this was (laughs) Oh, I know. But isn't this, isn't this so the way? We're a land of wishful thinkers. So complicated, Judith Malgram. I really, really appreciate your perspective. Always good to talk to you. Thank you. Seattle Now is produced by Claire McGrain, Sophie Reed, Caroline Chamberlain Gomez, and Jason Pagano. Matt Jorgensen does our music. I'm Patricia Murphy. See you tomorrow. Hi, I'm Patricia Murphy, host of Seattle Now. Thank you for watching. If you think this work is important and want to support us, subscribe to our channel, leave us a comment, and check out KUOW.org for local news.